Holy One, my God, how I needed you. My very soul thirsted for you. My body fainted with longing for you like a dry and waterless desert. Then I saw you in the holy place, gazing on your power and glory. Surely your faithful love is better than life itself. My lips proclaim your praise. Good day, friends in Christ. Welcome to prayer on Tuesday, the 27th of August. Those words from Psalm 63. As we go more deeply into our prayer time together today, let's take a moment's quiet and open our hearts to the love of God. Lord, open our lips together and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 5 is a passionate and confident cry to God for God's deliverance and for God to hear the intercessor's prayers. Have you ever begun your prayers by, Lord, listen to me, hearken to my prayers, listen to the voice of my supplication? If you have, you know the holy boldness with which the psalmist encourages us to open our hearts before God. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken to my cry for help, my sovereign and my God, for I make my prayer to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Early in the morning, I make my appeal and watch for you. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, and evil cannot dwell with you. Braggarts cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those who work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful, O Lord, you abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will go into your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of those who lie in wait for me, make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. There is destruction in their heart. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. Let them fall because of their schemes. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out for they have rebelled against you. But all who take refuge in you will be glad. They will sing out their joy forever. You shelter them so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. You will defend them with your favor as with a shield. Glory to God, source of all being, Eternal Word and Holy Spirit, together, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Source of all justice and goodness, you hate deception and evil. Lead us in the paths of righteousness, and keep us from falling into sin, that we may sing out our joy in Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Yesterday, we heard of Paul's conversion and his powerful preaching. Today, we pick up the story in chapter 9, verses 32 to 42. We return to St. Peter's ministry. We find Peter going down to Lydda, which is northwest of Jerusalem. There are believers here already, probably as a result of Philip's preaching. Now, as Peter went here and there among all the believers, he came down also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately Aeneas got up, and all the residents of Lydda 
and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. These are remarkable and encouraging stories from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Some have quipped that instead it should be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit, for it truly is the Holy Spirit at work in and through the lives of those in the early church. So encouraging. Here in Peter's ministry, we see two cases that follow the pattern of Jesus himself. You may be, remember the little girl who had died, and Jesus went in, took her by the hand, and said, Talitha kumi, little girl, arise. And she rose from the dead, much like Tabitha here, Peter taking her by the hand. Also, we have the fellow who is bedridden, paralyzed. Jesus, too, restored strength to paralyzed individuals. The point of this is that the church is called to carry on an imitation of the life of Jesus and also, and also to do his great works of faith in the community. Sometimes spectacular miracles do take place, and I do hear of them in the life of the people at St. Philip's. More often, the Spirit works through deeds of love and self-sacrifice in a more common manner. May the Lord continue to help us as church and as individuals imitate the good works of Jesus, our Lord and our pattern. Amen, amen. Our response to the scriptures read today is, Open my eyes, O Lord, so that I may see the wonders of your teaching. Lead me in the path of your commandments, O Lord, for that is my desire. Together, open my eyes, O Lord, so that I may see the wonders of your teaching. Remember your word to your servant, because you have given me hope. Together, open my eyes, O Lord, so that I may see the wonders of your teaching. Now, friends, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now turning to intercessions, please respond to the prompt, God of compassion, with teach us your ways. Let us pray. God of Jacob, may all who call themselves Christians become a priestly people 
to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. God of compassion, together, teach us your ways. May Andrew, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. God of compassion, teach us your ways. May Charles the King, the leaders of the nations, and all in authority lead their people into quiet and peaceable lives. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Show your good will to all who live in this city, the poor and the rich, the elderly, the young, men, women, and trans. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Help and defend the victims of our society and those who minister to them. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Strengthen the faith of those who are preparing for baptism, confirmation, and marriage. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Count us among all your faithful witnesses, all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. God of compassion, teach us your ways. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, so that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious toward you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord together. Thanks be to God. May the Lord find us watching and waiting for Christ's coming. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Tuesday.